Welcome to On Top of the Covers, a weekly podcast by Orlove. I'm Matt Gottesman, Director of Brands at Orlove, and this podcast is dedicated to all of the creative visionaries and entrepreneurs, artists, makers, disruptors, all of you guys around the world. Uh, you know, we're really here to feature inspirational stories of people contributing to the culture of music. How do they do it? And creatively, artistically, personally, professionally. And uh, we're really excited to be doing this uh, podcast, brand new podcast. This is actually officially episode one. And I'm joined here with the co with the founder of Orlove, Matt Orlove. And together we're going to be talking a little bit today about why we did this podcast, why we decided to start it, where do we see it going, what's going to happen, um, and mostly just riff because I think that's really what we do best. So, uh, so Matt. <laughs> There's a lot of Orloves in that introduction. There were a lot of Orloves. And we I could guess actually, that makes sense, though. It that does, makes sense. It does. It does. <laughs> I think, Makes sense. I think, I think we Matt, why don't, why, don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. You're going to be on this all the time. I'm just stopping by for this first episode. That is fair. Okay. But I am going to, I am going to pull you in as many as I, as into as many episodes that make sense, but I, I would, uh, I would love to. Well, uh, you know, for those of you listening for, again, we're very grateful to have you here. Uh, I am director of brands for our love and I do come from a background of all things digital last 20 years. Uh, I, I have a, another podcast called Hustle Sold separately, and I'm really grateful for, and, uh, you know, and some media and uh, some other ventures. And being a part of Orlove the last couple of years has really um, allowed me to expand uh, back into music, which is where I began really like 20 years ago. And, um, you know, this is, this, is, this is exciting for me because really podcasting and connecting with people in a digital space has been something that... Uh, I've, I've been doing for about six years and we're changing. Times are changing. It's a, it's a digital world that we live in now. And, uh, I'm grateful to be doing that with you, Matthew, and for the Orlove house. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your background? Sure. Well, first off, we met each other when I came to visit you on your podcast a few years ago. Yes. And it started this beautiful friendship. Yes, it did. Um, my, my, uh, to make a long story short, uh, Orlov has been around uh, since 2000, the end of 2013. And we are primarily have been an event production company. Um, we've uh, done somewhere around 250 to 300 events per year. And uh, because of COVID, uh, we were able to really delve into media which is something that we've been talking about for for a while but now that we had the time to do it we were able to create so um we started with a music program called under the covers mm -hmm. in which we uh, on a weekly basis every tuesday we showcase musicians from around the world covering current music uh that will be uh, a year in april that we started that and it's going very well so the next logical progression is yep. is doing a video podcast because uh, we do want to start featuring some very influential people within within music. Well, uh, you know, uh, I liked when you and I were, we were discussing this concept of um, there's a lot of stories that are not happening. You know, we're only kind of we only have access to what um, sometimes an in industry can can showcase, but there's so many other things that are happening, which we also saw from under the covers, you know, just in like reaching out to people around the world and, uh, you know, realizing like how much more connected we are. And then that, and I just, uh, our general conversations are, you know, why isn't it done this way? And what about this guy over here or this girl over here and what they're doing and, and, and how it's different than what was normally dictated as the right thing to do, uh, by industry. So I think it's cool to be able to open up these kind of conversations with different people as well and, and explore sure. all the facets, right? Yeah. It's, it's been an interesting journey, uh, especially on the music side. We're working with artists from Asia, South right. America, Australia, Europe. Um, and it's, it's just crazy that, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the, the ability to communicate from two completely different sides of the world uh, just wasn't as easy as it is today. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's been, uh, extremely positive 
for both of us to to be able to to see it work. And it well, it's and it's interesting because when so you and I we've learned a lot about in the marketing side of this as well too. And we've even had people reach out, right? They're like, "Hey, how did you <laughs> how did you do the marketing?" <laughs> and you know, yeah. you and I we go on a little bit of like tears, like, "Hey, well, how did you get you know more views on the videos than than um." than I did. And, you know, how do you do that? And <laughs> so it's, it's also, it's, it's, it's funny because, um, I always say whether it's music or art or fashion or photography or whatever entrepreneurship, you know, which is my podcast on something in, in creativity, whatever it is, um, the, all those same rules apply in a digital world, which is, um, you know, how you connect with others, putting a little bit of budget around, like promoting it on the different platforms, you know, actually like, what seemed like common sense to you and I though, isn't always so common with a lot of people. And, and I get that too. Like I have, I, you know, I, I empathize with a lot because sometimes you can overthink it, but I love the fact, I just started bringing this up because like, I love the fact that you so quickly were like, Oh, it makes sense. Um, how do I get this in front of somebody else that matters to, you know, to sure. who, who we're catering to. And it seems simple to us, right? <laughs> I think, I think marketing in general could be overwhelming yeah. uh, if it doesn't work and you spent money on it, it could shy, you could be shied away from continuing to do the same marketing. And it takes a lot of trial and error. I mean, I've, I've wasted money on marketing campaigns, but uh, if I, that didn't happen, I wouldn't be able to, to, to do it the right way on other stuff. Right. Um, I love what we talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, in terms of the tools that musicians have at their disposal now from all right. over. Um, and especially when you're starting off, there's the financial question of like, how am I possibly going to spend hundreds of dollars on my video that I'm putting out? But what you said was really interesting. Spend $5 a day instead of, you know, $5 that you might spend on coffee or something that you don't really need and use it towards marketing. And you're not going to get massive numbers, but if you continue to do that, for an extended amount of time, things will start happening. Priorities, right? Um, it's so easy to look at what we prioritize or not look at what we prioritize, like a Starbucks coffee, right? Or for like where people pay, you know, seven, eight dollars a day for it. I'm like, and I feel like what happens is they don't realize that seven or eight dollars a day for 30 days is $210 on like an Instagram ad that, you know, maybe it's just just to get the views on your video. And Okay, so you've gotten, you know, 10,000 views on your video, and then you put up on the next video for the next month, and the next month, and the next month. And that compound effect just seems so obvious. But I think the problem is not problem, but like people look at it and go, well, it's only $7. I'm like, yeah, but compound it, you know, and instead of the latte, <laughs> you know, get right. the views. Um, you know, so I also I want to talk about a little bit about, you know, why we're, why we're, you know, doing this a little bit further or what we expect to, to see from under the covers as well. And then, of course, we can, you know, jam out a little bit more. But back to the, the marketing tool point that you brought up, um, I think that what also happens, I could be wrong, is I believe people are in their head at this kind of conforming way of they're constantly looking into the industry versus just wanting to do it out of a general curiosity themselves. And this is in any, this is in any art form or any business meaning, which I know you get, um, they're, they're looking inward and go, yeah, I want to be that kind of big and I want those kind of people. And I, I know I have to spend that kind of budget. Oh, I can't afford it. So they're not looking at, they're looking in a weird macro that doesn't even really exist because they should be creating their own macro from the micro of, Hey, I just know that this is what I'm doing and I love doing what I'm doing and I want to connect with more people to my music. And so yeah. I'll, I'll like, you know, shuffle around and, and, um, you know, I'll promote my own music for, you know, three to five bucks a day and I'll, um, you know, uh, tag people and interact on other people's walls, social media, social networking, keyword networking, you know, all these things. It's like whatever you would do normally in a physical world, you're just doing in a digital world, like exponentially faster and mm. more expansive because it's, it's digital. And that's, that's it. I think when it's overthought of and trying to move into the, I'm just trying to move into the industry. Um, don't like, we don't live in you have world. to, you have to focus on yourself. Yeah. Look, the reality is if you build a following, if you build your own community, yes, right, that's going to continue to grow 
And eventually the industry, if you're big enough, will come to you. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it's it's all about focusing on yourself and what you do. It completely. And uh industries. Cause on one hand There you go. Yes. Right? Music can come to you, but also uh so could Reebok and Nike. <laughs> and also could some could fashion because they're like, oh wow, like look at this. Th- that's what I'm saying. Uh you know, I know it was brought up by Gary Vee a long time ago, but like, you know, be the honey, right? And then the bees will come to you, right? In a lot of ways. Um, well, that's how his analogy was. And I, I just I really dug it because it's sort of like I'm creating my ecosphere that is um my direct relationship with my audience. And I have all this data on them knowing like, you know, what they like, what they don't like, how we interact together. Um, and now you're in full management of your community, your thing that you built. Right. And the industries have to come to you at that point. And you then ha- can make, hopefully, sound decisions on how to manage that, you know, because you still have a responsibility to your audience, but because they make you, right? Um, but you have way more creative control. And you have way more say in how things turn out. And uh, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do versus like when you're in any industry and they tell you how to do something and you feel kind of icky when you're doing it. You're like, this doesn't really feel right. Like, I I don't want to do that. Like, well, that's how everybody does it. That's, by the way, I hate that phrase. And I don't use the word hate often, but like say when people say that's how everybody does it. No. I do too. I hate it. It's not. Or I also hate when when you hear um, that can't be done. (laughs) <laughs> says who that more so that can't be done yeah you know you know what i love uh I, when people say that can't be done i'm like i like your phone they're like huh i'm like can, can you can you lift up your phone real quick and they're like yeah i'm like your iphone he goes yeah yeah i'm like uh didn't steve jobs wasn't he told like that can't be done right they're like yeah and i'm like uh please look at everything you're consuming they're like yeah and i'm like exactly Right. So don't tell me what can't can be done. <laughs> I completely refute right. that, you know, but. But, you know, in general, it just, the reality is for anything takes a lot of time. Right. It's very hard. I, I mean, you probably, there's very few instances where things have just happened overnight. Even when you say things happen overnight, they still took a lot of time internally for that to happen. Um, we just don't see it. Yeah, because there was all the the background, um, you know, acquiring the skill sets or being in and around the 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 experiences. I mean, there's so much we just don't see before the quote unquote overnight success happens. And then right. you've seen right here, even with within media, what we've been building with the platform. Like, wow, a lot goes in. Look what happened in one year, right? With under the covers, um, and great, really good. And then you, but, and you see it because it gets you in the game and you're like, okay, wow, like we're doing really, really well. But it, it also shows you, wow, I see all that go, if all that this went into one year, man, do I respect when you see you know, some of these other platforms that are 10 years, 12 yeah. years, 15 years deep. Cause you're like, that must've been a lot of time, energy and money, you know? So massive Definitely. Respect. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the kind of guests that we're going to be featuring. You know, it's it's interesting so far to see a lot of the upcoming guests are such a wide range of people. We've got musicians and artists at various stages. We've got um, heads of, you know, big event style companies from like Ibiza and Tokyo and, <laughs> you know, and, and, and Dubai. And then on the other hand, we've got, um, you know, PR and events type folks. And then we've got uh, people related to like Spotify and, you uh, you know, other music streaming services and, uh, and then just general creatives, right? Um, you know, people in sound, people in design, people in, um, music production. Uh, And it's interesting because a lot of them really carved out their own niche. They really didn't do it. I've, I've been looking at a lot of their backgrounds. They really did not do it the traditional route at all, which is fun for me because you can see that they're kind of dictating a different type of outcome, uh, as they've gotten to where they've gotten, right? And um, and it's interesting. Like, they're commanding a different kind of attention. Um, and it'll be interesting to get an artist take, uh, like, you know, one of our, our first interviews. Uh, you know, we don't have to name it just yet, but stay tuned. Uh, one of our first interviews, I mean, this is a, a seriously talented uh, 
multi-instrumentalist. Uh, literally, I think the man can actually play like every single instrument and his videos are insanely cool and he's commanding, you know, millions of views for for his work. Um, but it's interesting watching, he's really building from the ground up his entire fan base and and with his manager, they're, they're, they're navigating the waters, right? Um, very differently than the way it used to be done. Grassroots is different now. It's completely different now than just, you know, selling out of the trunk of your car. It's like <laughs> selling at, oh, go ahead. Well, no, it's it's uh, it's important to note there are a ton of great musicians around, mm -hmm. but to be a great content creator, there it is. on top of being a great musician, is a huge plus, especially in in this current atmosphere that we're in. So, um, yeah, being able to create content on top of being a great musician and putting that in front of your fan base is like it's huge, and he's constantly doing it. Well, so consistency uh, being a key component there, and you bring up a really great point. Entrepreneurs and creatives and just pretty much anybody in this day and age, the skill set has expanded because of how we're managing our own individual ecospheres. So, you know, you, you've learned quite a bit about being a content creator, you know, from the advertising side to the organic side, you know, all of it. And you've learned what gravitates towards the audiences, what doesn't, you know, all these things. And it's, it's interesting um, to watch how no longer is somebody just an instrumentalist or a music or a singer. It's like, no, actually I'm a um, video director. <laughs> I'm a content creator. I'm a marketer. Uh, you know, I'm a marketer. Yeah. Like we have to wearing multiple hats today while a little bit easier because of the amount of tools also, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be overwhelming, but it can seem like that to a lot of people because we're, we're wearing more hats than we ever did before. But to your point, like it's, it, yeah. it starts, it starts to become a lot easier when you start seeing positive results. Yes. You know uh -huh. what I mean? If, if yeah. you're, if you're creating and you're not getting the results you want to see, it can get discouraging. Very. Very. And I, I feel like a lot of people, um, just stop because yeah. I've seen some great stuff and I don't see it like, you know, I see it for like a few months and then it kind of drops off. But um, the creators that are doing it year after year and consistently putting stuff out, you know, they must have seen some positive results on some of that uh, creation for them to continue doing it. I like that you bring that up. Um, and it happens in waves. Um, you, you jump in, you don't, you have zero expectations. Like, you know, <laughs> completely zero expectations. And then all of a sudden, a few people see your work. And you're like, oh, this is interesting. Okay, this is, you know, this is cool. And it starts to grow a little bit. And you you have like this baseline of growth for a little while. And all of a sudden, you hit a plateau. Plateaus suck. They do. <laughs> Plateaus yes. totally suck. And it happens to everybody. But it's interesting because I remember getting to different plateaus. And um, is it me? Is it the content? Like, what's going on? You know, what's this? And... I one, it reminds you of not getting too comfortable and, and stagnant in certain ways, and two, constantly reimagining how you can interact um, with your content. So I think that if you turn the discouragement more into a an opportunity of what can I change um, to you know to have a little, to con to continue having more fun because it's easy to get like once you start seeing result results start pouring in and you've seen this too you know it you're like oh yeah we'll just we'll just let this fly and then and then what do we do oh yeah if we do this for about the next year or two no problem we'll be at this and then boom like a month later <laughs> it goes by and and you're like what just happened why why, why does it change like what and, and everybody says it's like oh it's the algorithms oh it's the audience i think it's we're this. i think we're constantly fighting an algorithm oh man i i, I honestly think that's what it's all about yeah. Yeah. I feel like somebody in the algorithm at the, that manages all the algorithms are like, let's just mess with these people a little bit. Oh, you're having incredible growth. Bloop. <laughs> he's like, he's like a wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Just sitting little bit. over there. But you bring up a really good point. It, it is a consistency game. And I, I always say to people too, I'm like, that's why you really better love what you do because it's also going to help you innovate. Cause there's just going to be moments. Yeah. There's just gonna be moments that, um, you know, your stuff may not get seen as much, or, um, it may feel like you're hitting a little bit of stagnation. And the other thing too, is that's also really important. I've also noticed there's a lot of letting go because, um, why do you really want those views? Why do you really want those things? And yeah, of course we want to impact the world. And of course we want everybody to see our work, 
but there's responsibility and growth. Um, you know, I always said, I used to tell this to people back when, when my Instagram was first, like, I think it was like at 30 or 40,000 at the time, um, it's pre algorithm day. So it was, it was pumping it was, it was growing organically and people would ask me and I'm like, yeah, but like, are you really ready to push the button at like a million, two million, three million people? And a lot of people say that they are. I'm like, listen, when you really know your audience and you push that button, it's different than, you know, imagine being in an audience all of a sudden, like imagine being, uh, imagine you knew nothing and they put you on stage at like a stadium of 80,000 people that you never right. had any kind of relationship with go like you, you, it's a different kind of vibe when you actually grew, uh, just like you see underground artists when they grew, you know, from underground all the way up, like people who were there for the whole journey, you know, five, 10 yeah. years. You said the same thing one time, uh, we were talking about podcasts mm -hmm. and, um, somebody had a podcast and they were, they wanted it to grow faster than it was growing. Mm -hmm. And you said, okay, well, imagine if you were on Joe Rogan today, would you be able to have that same conversation? Right. In front of a huge audience. Right. Right. That's, that's nerve wracking. Right. It, it, it certainly can be. So I think that's why um, a lot of people, they, they love the end outcome. Oh, I, I totally get it. I mean, especially if you're addicted to results and you're, you're, you're wanting growth and you really believe in what you're doing. Yeah. But there's responsibility with the end outcome. So I always say growing into the man or woman that we're going to become to be able to handle that level of responsibility really makes it um, sustainable and long-term versus crash and burn, you know? Of course. Yeah. So I was, I was actually thinking if someone had asked us the question of what makes this conversation different than all the other podcasts that are around. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't even think, you know, a question like that doesn't necessarily, like the, the answer for me would just be, we're a different voice. Not everybody's the same. So regardless of what you're listening to, it's a different voice. And hopefully there's somebody out there who's listening that we're inspiring. Yeah. Well, um, a different voice, different take, um very organic and holistic in our and who we are in our approach too right because um you know there's uh i and i think we talked about this before about content you find a lot of people who go oh that's the formula so i'm going to use that formula and i'm like well that's great so you've got 50 podcasts in a certain niche with all the same formulas uh, well, if I have to pick one, <laughs> you know, I certainly don't want to keep listening to the same thing over and over again. Uh, and, and even in content creation, in podcasts and anything, I think establishing your voice and your whole self uh, mm -hmm. is the most important thing. Like, hey, what's your take? What's your angle on what we're seeing happening and, um, you know, how things are, are progressing in this world around the things that we love the most and that we can naturally talk about and geek out on and, and all those things. So um, I think that also makes us very fortunate because we're not following a <clears throat> industry guideline in any particular industry, but instead really um, manifesting a, a different path, if you will, which is also a really big proponent of the show. It's like, look, here's all other people that are doing the same thing. We're no different than all these other people. Um, we're just uh, in that aspect, uh, meaning we're taking control by, you know, manifesting our own kind of thought, our, our own angles into something and then creating it from from the ground up. Yep. What do you believe are some of the the interesting trends happening with music right now in general? That's a great question. So especially with everything that's happened with the pandemic. Yes. Um, Cause don't forget, if you take it from the artist side, the majority of money they were making was on, was with touring. Right. Now you take that out of the equation. Um, so digital has been just completely massive this last, mm -hmm. this last year. Do I think artists are making a ton of money from it? No. But do I think the ones that have done it right have built their brand in a way that once events start happening again, they're going to benefit from it? Yes. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's the big one. I mean, everything is uh, live streams and uh, video content right now. It was really interesting to see a lot of artists take a step back and be like, Oh, wait a minute. 
I got to adjust my lifestyle. I got to adjust my my approach, which I think is health. It's healthy in any business. It's healthy to take a step back and say, where can I diversify? I don't think they were expecting it from that type of massive shift. But I, to your point, I think it's very helpful. It's like, hey, what can you do during this time? You that, have to like, yeah. You have like this. This was time. By the way, this this goes way beyond music. Very much. I mean, look at restaurants. Yeah. Um, I was I was just uh, at In and Out Burger on Saturday, and at four thirty there was a line around the block, mm-hmm. cars. Um, now In and Out has always had that uh, blueprint for their business, where a lot of it is um, takeout. But you know, there's there's tons of restaurants that have had to revert to doing more delivery. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's any business like you had to like this this was a time to figure out ways for you to enhance your business at a time when you can't normally run it the way you used to so um you know with 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 going back to the music world with artists and and brands in general you know hopefully like when this is all over however long that is you know you can look back and say like well you know I did everything I can during this time that i had to build my creation and make it stronger i it's funny because i i had one of those i've been saying it <laughs> for 20 years you know when people look at you it's like uh, crazy for always wanting to be digitally diversified and so you know i had last year i had the people everywhere from um, be like, is this what you were talking about? I'm like, 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I even had, you know, some people be like, have you heard of Zoom? I'm like, now you're just insulting me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you not pay attention? I think they just thought I was like some glorified blogger <laughs> or something like that. But um, digital allows us to connect with people globally. When you think about that in commerce, when you think about that in um business development, marketing, research and development, planning, PR, all of these different areas in any business, um, you now have economies of skill that were not previously um, taken advantage of as much. And so I, I encouraged whether they were in the creative arts, music, fashion, you know, photography, videography, all those things, all the way to just businesses at large to really, to your point, rethink um, delivery mechanisms for um, their value. And digital is a perfect way to do it. It, it, it. Interestingly enough, when you put in like processes and systems and you put in some automation and you can actually streamline a lot of your activities, make it highly productive and efficient, highly scalable and substantially lower costs. It's actually a great opportunity for a lot of businesses to be like, what would I normally be spending? See, even in back to music. So musicians, a lot of them, they want to get signed. They want to do all these big things. They want to be a part of these, you know, and I get distribution. I totally get it. The The thing that they may not be thinking of is the real sides of the money. Because if you're using a lot of old ways of, of doing things, you give up a lot of creative control and money. But if you can really understand the power of how technology and innovation work, now you're cutting costs uh, in all the applicable areas and keeping more of your profit. You and, know? and by the way, you can do it all yourself. And you can do it all yourself. Like all this stuff, is anybody can do just by sitting in front of their their computers. Yeah, yeah. There's a, you know, I know you hear me uh, rattle off on, on this guy all the time. I thought I had his book over here, but I don't. Naval Ravikant. Um, uh, big Silicon Valley investor. He's in like over 300 companies. Um, but he's not your average investor guy at all. Um, he's very much about, you know, happiness and and flow. And he's a very multidisciplinary thinker. And he was saying, he's like, we're living in a time, a very creative time, where, um, you know, the old ways of corporatism isn't uh, created from a foundation of in the industrial, you know, world, uh, industrialization is going to be overtaken by, the information age, because of exactly what you just said. People can even go, like, let's say you're a musician, you can easily go, you know what, um, I need to get some branding things done. I'll go to fiverr.com and I'll have them do it for like 10, 15, 20 bucks here. 
I can try different resources. Mm, it worked well with them, didn't work with them, great. You know, and he was bringing up this point of, you can get things done for you or for your clients at, in you know, fractions of the amount of time for a different kind of amount of money and you don't necessarily have to reuse somebody again if you didn't have a good experience. You do certain things, and he's like, and then you take a break and go to Tahiti. <laughs> you know, but his, his <laughs> whole point, his whole main point was just that. To your point, you're in more control. Companies will probably become like you'll 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 notice the rise of brands that are like two to five people total. You know, he was saying this on Joe Rogan and in his book. Um, you'll probably see like you know two to five people total running a company. Um, your cost, which is which is crazy to think, by the right, way, right? Right? Because you look at these big companies, and in right. the back of your mind, you're like, there must be hundreds of people working right. on the same thing, and it's actually it's you can work better with a smaller group that all has yes. that same mentality. That's right? exactly it. Yeah, I mean, that, and and um, with the amount of tools each of the five people can use together, rowing the boat together, forget it. I mean you're in a whole other level of, of, of flow and control. Um, and, and that's exciting for, you know, where, where uh, we're heading. And so he was, he was saying, yeah, you're, where there's going to be this massive rise of um, people on the internet as its main medium, uh, because he talks about like the internet is really, you, you got to look at several things and, and this is, this is phenomenal because this is exactly what we play in all these areas. And he was saying leverage, which you get with, um, from audience building media, right. Um, you know, products and services and you can you know deliver them digitally as well uh, and there was like several other categories but when you look at the um uh, it, but leverage was at the forefront of what he was saying and he's like we're living in a very beautiful time when you don't fight it and you don't get, you don't offer resistance to it uh, as a brand or a company instead you really embrace it and double down on it but you know um those that take advantage of this time will notice it and it's usually the smaller guys it's usually the you know all these um these pop-up brands that are constantly happening every single day and previously bigger companies used to just acquire like so big labels big right. companies just acquire like oh we'll just take you but no the leverage has changed so now people are like you could acquire me but i think i'm okay <laughs> you know? well you know it goes back to if you're smaller you yeah. have the ability to make a decision quicker yes. yes i mean the biggest companies i mean to get something done probably takes a long time because it's going from one person to the next the bureaucracies are insane so it's a huge it's it's a huge freedom to be able to make decisions i love it yeah on a dime yeah well and um i was thinking a lot about recently leadership with small groups um is very well small or or, or big i was i was interviewed on a podcast um, for the, he's the former vice president of the Disney theme parks and he had me on his podcast and we we're talking about leadership and we're living in a time where it requires a higher EQ, you know, because um, we're having smaller groups, um, which is great if we started then, because if we do voluntarily or involuntarily become too large, at least we had a foundation of how we are handling people. And the idea was this higher EQ of, hey, well, you know, look, I, I don't want to micromanage you. That's not what I'm here to do. You and I talk about this a lot, actually. But like, I don't want to micromanage you. I want you to do what you do that you do really, really well. I still want the ability to interact with you and like bounce ideas off of you and check you as an accountability partner. Um, but I also want to know like what your needs are. Like, what are you what are you trying to accomplish? What do you want? You know, how do we uh, how do we work together in, in creating something Um and you can really do that significantly in smaller groups where everybody feels like they're part, they're, they're, there's the freedom to create um, right. and the freedom to make mistakes while creating, um, which is how they, because where does innovation come from? Mistakes. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. It's, I think it's a, a, a great method within a company to allow your employees to, to, be, to think entrepreneurial-like, mm -hmm. yes. right? Have them think of, what they could do or what they could create within the company to to make it stronger yeah. you know not always go by a blueprint of like this is what we always do do the same thing do that create your own like you know ideas and if they work they're great we'll try them yeah um i remember when they talked about that in mba school uh entrepreneurship right um and it was there that you go yeah, and so and and I I actually think I encourage not think I I highly encourage entrepreneurship in anybody that's building anything um, because if you I, this is an interesting conversation I just had with somebody the other day if you tell somebody um, here's what I want 
and um, you know, uh, I've had people come back with that exact thing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I was just trying to give you direction. I've noticed a different outcome when I said, you know, those things that you did over here and here like that. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I want to see how far you can expand your creativity in this thing. Um, go. You give me your your take. And it's fascinating to watch because here's what I learned. It's a, um, they were providing me with something that I gave direction on because they were concerned with giving, you know, executing for me. Like, hey, this is what you want, right? And then until I realized, oh, wait a minute, I need to give you in some ways, because if you're helping the organization, permission to, like, it's okay to be creative and in your own lane. Like, go. I want to see how far you can you can take it. And man, when they came back with something completely like it was just a whole other like level of proud. They weren't trying to serve yeah. me. They were trying to serve the greater like expression of of themselves in their art and design. I'm like, this, that's what I want. Exactly. You know? We do that too, by the way. Yeah. When we, we really do each other. We're we're the same way. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> it was like, do the thing that you do when you do it. And I'm like, okay. And you're like, yeah, and then just show me what you come up with and then we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's, it's I also say, um, and you're, you're a testament to this. So we're talking about all these tools that you have on online. And isn't it fun? Like you get to see, you know, as we've, as I've been you're like, hey, how'd you create that with the video? Or how'd you do that with the, the design and like Canva and all this stuff? And then you come back with stuff. Sometimes I'm like, wow. Like, you know, you were up late. You're like, no, no, I did that yesterday in like 10 minutes, but I was having fun yeah. with it, <laughs> you know, but, but, but you see how like easy it is once you know that a tool exists and then you can use it to shape and mold something. Um, so it's fun. It's a fun time. What's crazy is, is now knowing how much I've spent on graphic designers I know, I know. to do something that I could do on my own in 10 yep. minutes. Right. I mean, Canva. Was That's just... that. I'm actually very proud of that. Yeah. During this time, I had to learn how to do that. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're but but absolutely uh because um digital has caused uh i think i was always because i was always and as were you an entrepreneur you have to be resourceful so digital causes you to be very resourceful but canva was a game changer you know that that woman um you know she's i think they're like now 10 12 years deep in there or whatever and she's like one of the youngest you know billionaires out of australia in billionaires in the world humble so so humble and um but her whole thing was um bringing more control back to the to the entrepreneur to the creator if you will but it disrupted designers in a lot of ways because i mean canvas you know you can honestly create, if yeah. anybody's listening to this yeah who does you know needs designs uh and usually either ask a friend or hire someone to do something check out canva it's so easy Yes, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. They are not a sponsor yet. They're not. Uh, <laughs> but we, we just love giving away value. Uh, for, yeah, you know, no, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's huge. It's, it's, uh, it, it's changed the way that I look at design because I can now do everything my, on my own. And I, I create two or three things uh, a week with Under the Cover. So it's, it's mm -hmm. been great. Yeah. Um, by the way, in case anybody, so you, you wanting to come up with an excuse, it's free. Um, now, Matt and I, we use a pro account and I think it's like $12 a month or something like that. And with pro, you can do all these additional extra things, but, but you're right. It's, it's, it's crazy. Cause you can, um, you can, you start to think about design differently. If you can think about the things that you like and why you like them and how they look and feel and all that stuff in a physical world. Well, now you can take that to, um, you know, creating something in, for yourself for, for content. And it's just, a very cool. Yeah. So again, like you see how like you, we learn these tools, we save money, we become more resourceful. Um, groups of uh, brands can get smaller and how many people are working on something. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting, but yeah. Yeah. So leverage, leverage, leverage. Right. I actually, you know, there's one or two designers that we normally will work with on yes. our events. Mm -hmm. So they know our brands. Right. Um, you hire somebody who you've never worked with before that doesn't really know your company or your brand. It, it's a little more of a learning curve. So to be able to create your own content yourself, knowing your brand, knowing exactly what the aesthetic's going to look like is, is such a powerful tool to, to have. So, um, and I, I honestly, like I, I feel for me personally that I've only gotten better uh, over these last, you know, eight, nine, ten months that I've been doing it. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
and there you there you have it right yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> so <laughs> you know that's a um i think that uh you definitely need team members that know your brand well or have been with you for a little while and whatnot. I think that the, the, there will always be a need in, in different things. And then when we're experimenting or when we need to do things that are brand new, again, I always say you can't delegate what you don't understand. Right. Right. So um, those, you know, when you have, we have designers that can help us with certain things because they know the brand, the things that we don't need to burden them with that aren't as intensive, but that allow us to experiment with, we use our, we use tools that are at our disposal in anything, right? Same with videography. We do certain things before we can. And so we have the videography team come in and be like, okay, you guys are ready for a little something more. Let me, let us, you know, do what we have to do now here. Right. Right. So, you know, but we're able to delegate knowing, uh, and that's, I think another thing too, for, for, um, this world that we're living in now, it's, um, we can figure things out quicker by ourselves. It's called Google. <laughs> and then, what? But, Wait, how do you spell that? Uh, it's a G O O G L E. Have you heard of it? No, but thanks for the nugget. Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. And, um, <laughs> so, uh, but once we do understand it and the level of complexity, do I want to continue playing in it or do I want to delegate it? But at least I'm clear on what I'm delegating. This is a new venture for us mm -hmm. doing this podcast. Right. Where would you like to see it? Not, not in terms of numbers, but uh, what's, what's a goal for you for the next six months? The next six months, uh, I thought you were going to say the, the, the overall vision. <laughs> so the next, no. the ne you know, the next six months, I would love to have. Because, because just yeah. cause really quick, cause I, I, I yeah. think it'd be, you know, I'll stop by, you know, once in a while, but. I think we should like look at it every six months and talk about the progression of, of what we've created. Yeah. And then talk about the next six months and see if we actually get those goals. Well, I like the idea of um, constantly innovating the program and constantly innovating the, the style and things like that, but also um, allowing the flexibility of it to, to grow where it needs to be. Now, it's, what's cool is taking the, <clears throat> the HSS format and specifically gearing it around people contributing to the culture of music is a, a well it's a little bit of a homecoming for me because of where i first started uh in music and then a second because um it's niching down into a very specific i want to call it like art or category if you will and seeing how all the different people are, are coming in from it so for me i would love to see some uh amazing conversations and um how you know, a lot of, a lot of value added, like how to's in a way from them, um, to, to inspire a lot of the audience <clears throat> to help them in any of their kind of their creative ventures. I don't want to just limit it to music, but their creative ventures. Sure. Uh, and I would love to see it really extend the brand of Orlov on the Orlov YouTube channel where people can kind of see the, the multidimensional. It's like, oh, wow, it's not just events. It's not just, um, musicians. It's also people and culture right and I, I, that to me is a really it all ties cool. in together by the way yeah all of it, it ties in together exactly yeah so that's where i would like to see it i mean and i don't i don't i don't have any numbers per se if you will i don't know if no. that's a, <laughs> you know I, I think i'll leave that to you if you're like we're gonna try to get this number i'm like yep that's the number we're going for <laughs> no 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 it's it's not it's not about the numbers right now. right this is right. this is uh i i think this is the important right. next step for us mm -hmm. uh for us to really have our voice Yes. You know, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that we do is, is behind the scenes. Right. 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 So this is an opportunity for us to have our voice and to, you know, learn, uh, from inspiring people to yeah. really like talk. Yeah. I, you know, and I would, I'd, I'd also really like to expand the conversations with you as well too, over time where, um, we can pick a very specific, uh, topic that people ask us about or that we see happening and be like, you know what, let's, let's pin drop that for a pod. We'll just jump on and just really create a, a, a quick podcast yes. episode anytime. Um, because you know, our conversations, uh, quite frankly, everybody listening, we're probably being very polite <laughs> in a lot of ways, but no, but I mean, uh, but we go on these tears sometimes we're like, but I don't understand why would they want it? Why would they think that way when you could do it this, you know? So I definitely want to see a, a lot of the, I'm um, picking a cool topic, uh, to, to really, uh, hone in on and, Hope you provide insight and value and takeaways that people can also use and, and think about it differently versus feeling trapped into the old way of doing things, you know? Agreed. All right. Well, with that, um, you know, really looking forward to uh, seeing all where this goes. Uh, we've already started booking out lots of uh, guests for the, the next several months already. So <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm grateful it's been well received. 
and uh, really appreciate you doing this, doing this with you, Matt. And uh, you know, we want to just take the time to thank everybody that's tuning into the show. On top of the covers, it means a lot to us. Uh, it means a lot to the movement and uh, the contribution of of music culture. Um, and we want to, you know, we thank you guys for any feedback that you guys give us for this journey. And of course, you can find us at We Are Orlove on um, on Instagram at Matt Goddessman if you want to reach out to me. And a big, big, big shout out to Birdie. Uh, that's the music that you hear in the background on the intro and the outro. And we're just so grateful, uh, you know, that he's contributing to our podcast and this journey. And of course, you can also subscribe or love YouTube channel. Matt, do you have anything that you want to share? No, I'm just uh, excited to be on this journey with you. There's really not a single other person that I think is perfect for uh, the hosting of this this new program. So awesome. thank you. I'm honored. I, I am a truly, truly honored by the way that you, uh, um, you know, you're like, hey, head this one up. Let's go. Let's do this. And, and for you everybody, you got to do listen. what you're good at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, by the way, anybody listening, that's important. That's why Matt and I work very well together is because we always try to use each other's strengths and we identify where each other's are, are weaknesses so we can help each other only stay in our lane of, of, of the things that we're really good at. I'm like, you know what? Just do that. <laughs> so, and he's definitely noticed the difference in, in me. He's like, yeah, I see when you excel over here and I see when you fall over here. <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 you got to have people you can really run with. That's, that's a, probably one of the biggest takeaways I can tell anybody. So, you know, um, thank you for trusting me in this journey. I really appreciate it. Of course. And we're out. <laughs>